Hey guys, I'm about to do some work on the uh, on the controller. I figured I'd share some of the uh, things I do. Um, this big one here, um, how many fets it is, never counted it, but uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 fet. Uh, it's an old one, and so I'm basically taking some of the parts off that I originally put on years ago, like the 100 volt caps, I gotta remove all the FETs, check the value of them. I'm pretty sure they can take quite a bit of voltage. But uh, there's one or two dead ones on there that I have to find and toss out. And then we're going to rebuild that small one there for about 100 volts, which I'll show you how to do that. Um, I've got the trace wires ready to go, so I can add it to the small one. And then we're going to add these FETs to the small one and new caps and some wiring. So I'm going to save you the bother of watching me solder. And then we'll uh, get started on this. Yeah, getting the FETs out of a dead controller is pretty easy. <laughs> I usually just use a, um, this is like a 500 water. Just uh, grab the FET, heat up the back, and lightly pull. And the pet should just drop right out. Of course, when I have to show it on camera, it's not as easy. But uh, as long as you don't let them heat up too much, if you can still handle them when you get them off, they're fine. They're safe. Do get a little bit warm though. So let me get the rest of these off, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm just basically weeding out any bad fets. Because the last thing you want to do is throw them on another controller and then we'll check the specs on them these all look good I left the one row that was actually the issue with that controller because I there I think there's also issue with the the um, the smaller FETs that are on the controller I can't remember the name of them, but uh, regardless, that was the issue with that controller, and I never did find the problem, so I'm just eliminating it by eliminating it by not using any of those parts. Okay, so these are all good, so I'm going to clean them up, and then we'll uh, check the specs on them. Okay, well, there's our PDF. Uh, the maximum rating for these is 75 volts at 80 amp, which isn't that good. Um, I'm not going to put those on another controller because I w if, I, if anything, I'm going to run at 79 volts. The amperage is nice, but the voltage is bad. I need at least 100 or at least 80. <laughs> so I'll keep those FETs for spares. I'm going to be ordering some in the future or shortly anyway with a couple of more controllers and uh, basically all I'm going to do this controller is just uh, beef up the um, the traces underneath it okay to beef up the traces I'd like to use actually two soldering guns a low wattage and a high wattage um, it's best to take your, I like to use, um, this isn't exactly the wire I'd like to use, but this is what I have available. Um, what I like to use is, um, I use uh, house wire. I usually pull the uh, ground strap out of that. It's nice and thick copper. Uh, if you ever have that laying around, you basically just uh, cut it and form it to where you want it to go. Like that. Then you take your soldering gun. A little bit of solder and you're going to tack it down that way it doesn't move around too much when you're um, actually whoops actually bring it down sorry I'm, I'm used getting used to these gloves I don't want to handle this thing too much because I damage it static damage with the FETs so I'm trying the gloves out I'm failing Okay. Helps if you don't have uh, this moving around. There we go. And maybe a pair of tweezers wouldn't hurt. Just 
just to move it around. Oh, and she fell off. So you get what I mean. It's good to tack it first, then uh, you can uh, go nuts with the uh, solder. Okay, come on. Okay, there's tack there. Then we'll push it down. We'll do the. We'll try and get it as straight as possible. You don't want it too close to the pins of the fets because you risk a short. And then we'll just tack it there. Okay. Bend it some more. Tack it here. After you do it a few times, uh, you can come up with your own little method, whatever is easier for you. This is the way I like to do it. Then I hit it with the really hot one. Okay. There, let's tack down. And then you basically do the same with the next one. That goes here. The two main lines that go across are the only ones that really need to be done. You can beef up the, the traces going to the FET if you want with just solder. But uh, be very careful. And also double check your soldering when you're done with the loop just to be sure you haven't bridged any pins. That way when you turn it on you don't blow it up. Okay, let's tack there. We'll move it a bit. Okay, there's a piece floating around there. Oh, it's moving. Bummer. It's looking hot enough. Come on. Uh. Okay, I'm taking the gloves off, guys. I know I gotta get used to these things, but they're coming off. Yoink. There we go. The only thing good about them is uh I can't feel the heat. They're supposed to help me from static damage and these are fets, they're very sensitive to static. Instead of using up more video, let me get this started. Okay, I think my soldering gun is ready. Put the gloves back on. <laughs> uh, basically, all I'm going to do here is heat it up. Oop. As I'm heating it up, I'm pushing it down just a bit, just to get it to tack. Oh. There we go. That didn't hold so well, did it? Ugh. Soldering gun still could be a little bit hotter. Youch! Felt that through the gloves. 
Let me remount this thing and uh, keep going. Come on. Manipulate. Whoa. Oh, we did it. Oh, I can see it's bending. Gonna have to straighten that out with a hammer. Okay. Good enough. I'm gonna add a little bit more solder to it. Get my thing going here. Just basically just go like that. Just drag it along. Dragging your solder with it. And as you can see it's bridging the gap. Making it one solid piece. And that's about it guys. Let me finish this up and then we'll uh, we'll do the capacitors and that'll be it for this one until I order the, um, the FETs because I'm going to run this one at higher voltages, probably maybe 100, 150. Let's see how high it'll go <laughs> before it blows up and, uh, and a ball of plasma. Okay. So uh, remove those capacitors. That's nice. See how nice and even that is. No gaps. It's like um, it's like welding. It's like a bead of when you're welding, but you want that bead to be solder. So it's going to transfer the heat and the amps evenly. You don't want gaps. Right there, you don't want that. I'll fill that in the corner. Okay, see the max on these caps is um, um, doesn't say. Oh, there you go, 63 volts. So if you ran this at 79 volts, these would be maxed out. They likely would bleed or um, they would vent. So the minimum you want in some in the, any controller is uh, maybe a hundred hundred volt but keep the U, try to keep the UF the same so that's what we're going to do now is just going to pop those off okay we're just about ready to run a test on this one um, never be on a hurry never be in a hurry to uh, just slap one of these on the bike and uh, you know hoping that it just everything is going to be okay um, if you have a well what I basically do is I just basically throw it on my lab power supply at uh, half the voltage uh, if it's short or if there is a short it will um, just shut the supply off it won't uh, blow up the component Trying to find the holes here. Get a lot of solder on here. And when you're done with this, you can beef it up a bit with some solder, but. Yeah. It's the old method. This is going to be tight because it's right by the wiring. Give me a minute. Okay, finito. 
Um, as you can see, this one had one bad fet. Uh, that's why I'm eventually going to take them all out. Uh, not right now, though. I'm going to order some new ones. Uh, some things to look for when you're rebuilding one, you're replacing all the fets. Don't go hog wild and just pull all these out. Because when you put the spreader bar, or the heat spreader, back on it, and you solder these back into the board, if you don't have a gap properly, it this spreader bar won't uh, line up to screw it back into the um, the case. So what you do is you remove half of them, and then solder new ones in, and then do the other half. That way it keeps the same height. That's a good tip. Another good tip is these little standoffs here. There are two types, nylon and plastic. The plastic ones, you can tell by looking at them, they're, they're sort of like a clearish white. Uh, make sure you don't um, over tighten them because what happens is they squish and the screw will short the FET to the spreader bar. So that's bad. So make sure, you know, these ones here are all nylon, so they're good. So always check that, and also check your gapping. You can use a microfine glass or a loop, and you want to check each gap in between each FET just to be sure that the um, the back plate isn't touching the other one. As you can see, this one here is pretty close, but none of them are touching, so we're good there. And just quickly hook it up to a supply just to see if... Uh, everything pans out. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to clean up a bit and uh, try that out. Okay, and last but not least a quick test just to make sure everything we did today was alright. Um, they got the LED, red LED is for the the rails for the uh, FETs and the green one is for the PIC which is the computer basically. So just uh, pumping about 30 volts into it just for testing and as you can see if there was any issue it would it would, uh, it would show now <laughs> so it's it's ready to go for the uh, next stage of the mod which will be uh, better FETs and better wiring okay later guys